so today i am going to discuss transfer rna now right at the outset let me tell you what we are doing we are understanding the basics the basics of molecular biology i know that the topic that i am discussing is the larger picture is the process of translation so what we have done till now is we have replicated the dna and we have made a transcript and now we are looking at the steps by which this transcript or the rna molecule and this is specifically the messenger rna that we are talking about is being translated into a language of amino acids what is called as proteins so this is the step in the central dogma of molecular biology that we are actually discussing and again what i am saying is that before looking at the process itself let us understand the basics first of molecular biology then the process is easy the process becomes easy once you understand what exactly is the basic thing then it is easy as we had done in the case of transcription before teaching you the actual process of transcription i told you a lot about lot about the basics that we are going to encounter in a process of transcription and then you remember that uh, the process of transcription actually became the easiest part of all so similarly we will invest our energy our time to the basics first and then we will see that how fluid actually the education becomes so once you start understanding what is happening then then learning is fun so i always advise students say for example in cell biology for example in molecular genetics for example evolution for example biotechnology uh, for example ecology they are very 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 crucial topics you cannot just cram them up and therefore it is important to understand what is happening and once you start understanding then you get the beauty of biology in front of you then you understand what exactly is happening and then the learning becomes fun and it is my firm belief that once the learning becomes fun for a student then the student is capable of immense hard work they have immense potential and then then everything becomes very easy so coming back to the topic the transfer rna you know that we are looking at the uh, process of translation and some basics about it now uh, there is a very important point of ncrt that i am discussing right at the outset so if you look at the ncrt textbook i have the book book with me so let me show you what exactly i am trying to uh, trying to actually discuss first in this video so let us open the chapter of molecular genetics and just go through the exact thing that we are going to look into first this is this is the point this is the point that i will be telling you first this is 6.6.2 uh trna the adapter molecule watch this word so this is the word that we will be focusing our discussion on that what does this adapter mean so uh, uh, your ncrt uh, writes it beautifully and let me explain it to you the thing is that we are talking this process as translation we call this process as transcription we have done it repeatedly there is no harm in revising it i have repeatedly told you that dna is a language made up of nucleotides this is deoxy ribonucleotides that we are talking about similarly rna is also a language that carries a language again made up of nucleotides be it ribonucleotides so the language remains practically the same and therefore the process is called as transcription we have already discussed it we have already discussed that once the language of nucleotides is being converted into a language of what is known as amino acid so we are looking here at nucleotides and being converted into a language of uh, amino acid then the process is aptly called as translation so this is the first point to understand now when francis crick was thinking about this problem so he had a basic fundamental question now because amino acids do not have the capability of uniquely reading the genetic code remember this genetic code is in the form of codons that is present either on dna or the messenger rna which is actually the transcript of dna and this messenger rna the final transcript is actually what is translated in the eukaryotic cell so this is what we know so we know that the genetic code is written on dna 
the genetic code will be reflected in the messenger RNA molecule and it is the messenger RNA molecule that will take this code to the protein synthesizing machinery which is the ribosome where it will get translated and the language changes. So now the, the question was because, uh, because the amino acids as I told you and your NCRT says that do not have the unique capability or the capability to read genetic code uniquely uniquely would mean that will absolutely crystal clearly so that means it cannot differentiate that and it doesn't have the capability of reading the language of nucleotides there must be a molecule in between doing that function this molecule is called as an adapter molecule it, it will require an adapter molecule and this adapter molecule must on one hand be capable of reading the genetic code uniquely and on the other hand will bring amino acid to ribosomes which will actually synthesize the protein. I hope this is absolutely clear. This is what my NCRT is saying. So at the beginning it, is, it was very clear to Francis Crick that there has to be an adapter molecule. Now we understand the function of transfer RNA. Why is it called as an adapter molecule? For the sake of repetition, I am again telling you because amino acids do not have this capability. They cannot read the genetic code uniquely. So you require something that will link this change of language. So language of nucleotide being changed into language of amino acid. What molecule facilitates that? There must be a molecule that can read this and bring amino acid. And this is where the role of transfer RNA molecules comes into picture. And therefore, it is very correctly described by your NCRT as an adapter molecule. An adapter molecule. So therefore, you can easily understand the importance of transfer RNA in, in, uh, in uh, the process of translation. So uh, let me explain it again. What I am trying to say is this that this is a eukaryotic cell it has a well-defined nucleus let us say this is dna and this is the segment that carries the structural gene that is going to produce that is going to be reflected or expressed into a protein and we have made a transcript of on it this is called as the messenger rna molecule this messenger rna molecule takes the message to the ribosome and the cytosol contains amino acid you know by the process of say for example in human beings digestion you eat proteins you digest the protein into amino acid these amino acids which are the end product of protein digestion are actually absorbed in the intestine and they are transported by the blood to the various cell where the cells will utilize these amino acids to make proteins according to the information encoded in our genetic code. So we require very precise and very specific proteins because otherwise a question becomes very very important. If I am eating a protein and I require protein then why do I first digest it into amino acid and then, then actually make again the proteins. So this is very very important. Two things are very important to consider here. Number one, protein is a large molecule. It is not going to be absorbed. Hence the need for digestion. And moreover, the protein that I require will not be the protein that I am eating say for example in a meat or in an animal meat. For example, collagen, it is not the same. So that means I will like to make my own proteins. So this own protein will be according to my own genetic code and therefore I require actually the raw material and these, these raw materials are the amino acids you know that amino acids are the building block of proteins and therefore I have transported the amino acids to the cell so that they can decide they can actually make the protein according to the genetic code I hope this is absolutely clear. Now what I am trying to say that there must be a molecule that is capable of reading the code and bringing the amino acid to this apparatus. So here there, there will be linking of the amino acids by peptide bond and the formation of the proteins. But these are scattered. So there must be some molecule. This molecule will actually bring the amino acid 
to this particular place and it will be having this capability of reading the code as well and linking the amino acid to the code and therefore I am calling this function as the adapter function and this molecule as the adapter molecule and now we know that it is transfer RNA that acts as the adapter molecule I hope you got what your NCRT is saying another interesting point that is being said in the NCRT is this that the that the uh, that the presence of transfer RNA was actually known which means that they, it was actually called as soluble RNA so transfer RNA is the smallest of the RNA molecules and it is actually called as soluble RNA now soluble RNA tells you that it is a very very small RNA molecule so it is called as soluble RNA and at that time when Francis Crick was actually saying this the presence of this was known but it was not known that this is the molecule which will act as adapter so this is a very intriguing thing that the NCRT is saying so we know we knew the presence of soluble RNA but we were not aware that it is the soluble RNA later on called as transfer RNA is actually the adapter molecule this function was discovered or this function was ascribed to the transfer RNA molecule later I hope this is absolutely again clear from your NCRT so this thing is very 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 simple now now we understand why Francis is Crick was saying that there has to be an adapter molecule and we know that this adapter molecule has to be transfer RNA now let me be very clear here itself uh, this transfer RNA is is not not very clear to many of these students they just cram it up so therefore this is this is this is something that has to be understood so if you understand then there is no need of cramming again and again I am saying that and again we are ready to discuss so we I am trying to simplify the things for you you just have to work hard you just have to see the video once and twice and then you will see you don't need to cram up anything at all now this transfer RNA molecule as I told you is the smallest of the RNA uh, actually it contains only uh, let us say 75 to 90 uh, 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 nucleotides so this is the number of number of nucleotides that is present so let me be very precise let us say 76 to 90 nucleotides remember I am not saying base pairs I am saying only nucleotides so this is a very very small molecule this is a very very low molecular weight molecule you can understand only 76 to 90 nucleotides long and it is folded upon itself so like all other things it will have a primary structure it will have a secondary structure and it will have a tertiary structure or three dimensional structure so let us use the word primary secondary and tertiary for protein here what we will say one dimensional structure two dimensional structure or 2d structure and three dimensional structure or what is known as the 3d structure so let us let us be absolutely clear that this transfer RNA molecule will also have a 3D uh, structure but before the 3D obviously it will have what is called as the two dimensional structure in fact the two dimensional structure is more popular amongst the students and amongst the molecular geneticists and uh, and for the simple reason that if you study the if you study the two dimensional structure of transfer RNA you can very easily understand the functions of it and it is very very famously called as the clover leaf model so this is called as clover leaf model so this clover leaf model represents what is called as a two dimensional structure of transfer RNA molecule this is a very very important question and and the three dimensional structure resembles an inverted L so it resembles the L but you can see the other way around so that means the three dimensional structure resembles the English alphabet L and two dimensional is the structure that is actually called as the clover leaf model so this must be absolutely clear so if I am making a clover leaf model so please understand this this is something like this so sometimes you will find a short extra arm here there will be some loops and this is what it looks like say for example this is the 5 prime end of the molecule this is the 3 prime end of the molecule and it is folded upon itself and because because you know about the complementary base pairing and what can happen that if say for example say for example you have G here and C here so there may be hydrogen bonds 
so that means because of this hydrogen bond some people think that it may be is it partially double stranded the answer is no so i will ask you ask one of you say for example to hold the 5 prime end and the other to hold the 3 prime end and if i ask you to go away from each other you can easily understand this thing will open up and it will become a single wire so it is actually a single stranded molecule it is folded upon itself and whenever the complementary bases you will see coming uh, coming adjacent to each other there is invariably the formation of hydrogen bonds so i hope this is very very simple to understand now let us look and analyze the structure what we are calling as the clover leaf model or the two dimensional structure of the of the rna transfer rna molecule and let us try to understand some very odd peculiarities that are found in the transfer rna molecule with the help of a very good diagram so let me show you a diagram and then explain the transfer rna structure so on this side you can see the two dimensional structure this is the two dimensional structure we are calling it as clover leaf so again uh, see it very closely this is made up of nucleotides and very few nucleotides as i told you 76 to 90 this what this is what is called as the three dimensional structure as i told you it resembles the english alphabet l so simultaneously you are seeing a two dimensional model and a three dimensional structure of the transfer rna molecule now as i told you watch closely this is the five prime end this is where the phosphate group is present look at this this is the five prime end you already know what is the five prime end of a nucleotide polynucleotide so that means this phosphate group will be present at the five prime end and can you see that this end is three prime this end is 3 prime you can see there is hydroxyl here this is very similar to the every nucleotide that we have actually read so we know what is the 5 prime end of a polynucleotide and we also know what is the 3 prime end of a polynucleotide now you can easily understand and you can see that there are some hydrogen bonds that are being formed between the complementary base but that does not make it what is called as double stranded another point to understand is that there are some loop and you can see here it is written as d loop sometimes this may be called as dhu loop and this dhu stands for an unusual base that is found in transfer rna so remember that transfer rna will carry some unusual bases and this is called as dihydrouridin so this is dihydrouridin modified uridin it will be present you can see it is present in the in this particular loop and then as i said that there there is just opposite to this particular end where you are seeing the 5 prime end and the 3 prime end just opposite to end uh, opposite to it there is an anticodone loop so there is an anticodone loop and then there is this is the short extra arm sometimes also called as variable loop and then another loop on this side this is called as t psi c loop so psi stands for pseudo uridin again an unusual base present in present in a transfer rna molecule and this is the acceptor stem so this part is the acceptor stem which means that the transfer rna molecules carries its cognate rna at its three prime end it is here that the amino acid that it is supposed to carry will be attached to it so this is the amino acceptor means what what does it expect accept it accepts what is called as the amino acid so this acceptor stem means that the amino acid will be will be will be accepted at the three prime end so again saying something so we are looking at the acceptor stem uh, stem you can see that there may be 7 to 10 nucleotide bases here and very very important to understand it is ending in cca look at the ending sequence i am reading the uh, in polynucleotide from, from 5 prime to 3 prime end and when i am going from this this place to this place i am reading it from 5 prime to 3 prime can you see the ending consensus sequence being c c a this is the sequence this is the sequence of the acceptor stem and can you see that 
the just opposite to it there is uh, one two three four five six seven five to seven uh, let us say bases uh, comprising what is called as anticodon where these three the different colored bases they form what is called as anticodon we will discuss uh, this in very great detail and you already see that there is a dhu loop and t psi c loop so i hope you understand the basic structure of the transfer rna molecule so what we saw is that here you will see the phosphate group here you will see hydroxyl group and the consensus sequence would be cca just look at the direction i am writing cca i am not writing cca i am writing it from 5 prime to 3 prime direction cca in prokaryotes in prokaryotes and eukaryotes there may be a difference it may be inbuilt or it may be added on to it onto the structure later on but always there will be cca that will be the ending consensus sequence in the transfer rna molecule and we are saying that this is where the activated amino acid will actually bind to the cognate transfer rna molecule and therefore we are calling this as the acceptor stem we looked at this particular loop as being dhu and i told you this is an unusual base and this unusual base is called as dihydrouridin so transfer rna carries some unusual bases and we saw here there was t psi c loop and psi would be an another an another unusual base which is called as pseudouridin this is very very important and opposite to this this is the anticodon loop this is what is called as the anticodon loop and here there would be a triplet or three bases and this would form what is called as anticodon and this anticodon will hybridize with the codon that is present on the messenger rna so you remember messenger rna it carries the transcript of the genetic information and a triplet of bases what is called as codon i dis i discussed it in different videos in other videos is making up a codon and that codon uh, that codon will be hybridized by the anticodon actually this is this is something that we need to have a very close look at and this we will do in this video itself so i hope you basically understand what exactly is the structure of structure of this particular transfer rna molecule and you can see that there will be some some hydrogen bonding that is invariable but that does not make it what is called as a double stranded molecule so i hope let us let us move to a very very important point let us understand about this anticodon so uh, let me make a small transfer rna molecule again i hope you have you have understood the basic clover leaf model of this transfer rna molecule and we are saying that this is the dhu loop this is the anticodon loop and this is t psi c loop this is the acceptor stem and again this is 5 prime end 3 prime end and cca cca so this is this is what we know and i told you that there will be three bases here and they will form what is called as the anticodon and again i said that this anticodon will actually hybridize with the codon now we know that in nucleic acid hybridization whether it is dna 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 rna 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 or rna dna that means whenever the two nucleic acids will be hybridized it will always be complementary and anti parallel this is a fundamental principle that we have uh, understood right at the beginning of the molecular biology so you remember the earlier discussions of the molecular biology when we started uh, reading about this particular uh, this particular topic and the nucleic acids i always said that the hybridization will always be complementary i hope you remember what is complementary base pairing and what is meant by the anti parallel nature of the two strands that are in proximity of each other so now 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 this is a very important thing to understand let us say that that this is a dna template now pay close attention to this this is very very important to understand so we are saying that this is 3 prime end and this is 5 prime end and let me write tac here 
so that means the dna codon is tac i hope you remember what exactly is genetic code you know that this is a dna codon so these three bases make up a codon this is a dna codon it says tac now i am making a transcript on it we have already seen that the messenger rna is transcribed from 5 prime end to the 3 prime end that means the messenger rna molecule itself is made 5 prime to 3 prime direction by rna polymerase so this we know so that means i will transcribe this 3 prime and or this 3 prime to 5 prime dna in this direction and because of the anti parallel and complementary nature i know that whatever is being formed on this template will be in 5 prime to 3 prime direction so let us make the messenger rna so this messenger rna would be as you know this would be a this would be u and g so this is what is the initiator codon so you know about aug aug is the initiator codon it codes for methionine so it has a dual rail a dual role i have already discussed this in the discussion of the genetic code so that means this is the transcript now there will be a transfer rna molecule that will be carrying a particular amino acid we will call this amino acid as methionine because we know that the initiator trans initiator codon uh, codes for methionine aug codes for this is the amino acid it codes for this is known as methionine and you know that methionine is formulated in prokaryotes but not formulated in eukaryotes i have already discussed please watch the video on genetic code now i want that a transfer rna molecule because this messenger rna just imagine has reached the ribosome it has carried this the transcript of this genetic code which is aug to the ribosome and now there must be the adapter role of the transfer rna molecule so the transfer rna molecule that will be carrying let us make it in only two dimensional view so let us look obviously i understand that there will be three dimensional three dimensional transfer rna molecule normally present but to understand we are looking at the two dimensional structure or the clover leaf model and this is the three prime end where we will see later on that somehow methionine which is the amino acid required will be actually attached and this would have an anticodon here and this anticodon will hybridize with this and let us see what exactly would be what exactly would be the sequence of the anticodon what exactly would be the sequence of anticodon so again the anticodon if it has to hybridize to the codon on messenger rna again it has to be anti parallel now this is a very very important concept take your time here so why what i am doing is that i am hybridizing again a nucleic acid and we know that because this is 5 prime to 3 prime something binds to it must be 3 prime to 5 prime that means that means it will again it will be again having a sequence similar to dna can you imagine this can you simply imagine this that it will be similar to dna this becomes very easy in the entrance if you understand this they can give you a sequence of messenger rna they will ask you what will be the transfer rna molecules that will be binding to it that would be very easy to understand that this transfer rna the anticodon sequence must be exactly same of dna but we know that dna contains thymine and instead rna contains uracil so i am replacing t by u and then the rest is absolutely same so the rest is absolutely same now please understand this is uac u is at the three prime end and c is at the five prime end i hope you are understanding what i am saying so this is the anticodon and this is the anticodon now i have to write the sequence of this anticodon here so i am trying to write this sequence of anticodon here just tell me where is c c is at the five prime end and this is the five prime end of the anticodon so that means i will write it something like this take it very seriously just again understand what i am saying i am saying this is the codon on dna this is the messenger rna transcript and the anticodon comes and binds to the codon this anticodon is present on the transfer rna molecule 
since the hybridization will be complementary and anti parallel so if this is 3 prime to 5 prime we have made 5 prime to 3 prime what messenger rna this has to be hybridized in 3 prime to 5 prime and the complementary base pairing tells me that this sequence must be exactly similar to the sequence that is actually present on the dna molecule and the difference would be that instead of t it will be u because we know the basic fundamental that the rna molecule doesn't have thymine instead it has uracil now but this is 5 prime to 3 prime cau or 3 prime to 5 prime uac so how do i write the anticodon here so if i am writing it from 5 prime to 3 prime direction then i am saying it is cau i hope this is now absolutely clear now please understand this is the first base of the anticodon because it is a convention to read the nucleic acids from 5 prime to 3 prime direction say for example so this is the first base of the anticodon which which actually hybridizes or combines or joins the third base of the codon so again i am telling you the first base on the anticodon is actually joining or binding or hybridizing the third base which is present on the codon and the third base of the anticodon is actually hybridizing with the first one this is very very important please understand this is third and this is third it is it is actually hybridizing with the first on messenger rna and this is this is basically the first base which is actually joining the third base on the codon this must be absolutely clear to everybody otherwise there is a scope of confusion here i hope this thing is absolutely clear so you must have understood what i am trying to say so again and again please see this practice it on your on your notebook and then it becomes easy it is just just a matter of understanding that what we are saying here so that means I have written CAU and I will be carrying methionine or formylated methionine in prokaryotes at the 3 prime end which is the end of the acceptor stem of the transfer RNA molecule. I hope this thing is absolutely clear. Again and again I am hoping that you are watching this video very closely. So this thing will confuse you in an exam but please do not be confused. This is very very simple to understand if you keep the basic rules in your mind nothing can go wrong wrong in the exam now there is a very very important implication of this again and again i am saying again and again i am saying that the transfer rna molecule has some unusual basis has some unusual basis and i have already discussed two important bases one is d dihydrouridin and the other one was uh, pseudo uh, the pseudo uridin so uh, d dihydrouridin and pseudo uridin you remember t c loop and dhu loop now now one more thing to under understand is this we have already discussed genetic code we have seen degeneracy in the genetic code you know what is degenerate genetic code that means an amino acid can be coded for by more than one codon this is called as degeneracy of genetic code i have discussed it, it in detail on the videos on genetic code so which means say for example if i am looking at the mrna codon mind it these are mrna codons that i am locking uh, i am writing about and i am talking of the codons that will code for glycine so we will see that ggg this homopolymer actually codes for glycine again please remember these are mrna codons and if i change the third letter then you can see that if you check if you check the table given in your ncrt textbook on mrna codon you will understand what i am saying that gga and ggu they all are codons for glycine they all code for glycine this is very very important to understand so glycine can you see the degeneracy of the genetic code that we have already discussed so glycine can be coded by these four codons ggg ggc gga ggu and as i had told you in the in the video on on genetic code it is actually third code degeneracy can you see that i am changing the third code and you can see that there would be uh, there would be no no effect on the coding they all code for the same amino acid 
now we know that because genetic code is triplet so 4 cube this would be 64 codons that are possible that means i also know that out of these 64 codons 61 actually code for amino acid which is actually 20 20 proteinogenic amino acid on uh, uh, three are what are called as the termination codons so three are actually called as termination codons so you know about termination codons i am not going into details so we have already discussed that the genetic code is triplet there are 64 codons 61 actually code for 20 amino acid again you can see the degeneracy so one amino acid can be coded for by more than one codons this is very apparent now the important question is do we require 61 different types of transfer rna molecules for each of the codon considering the fact that there may be there may be third code degeneracy for many amino acid are you getting this question or not so the question is that there are 61 codons so do i require 61 different type of transfer rna molecule to identify each of them uniquely though i know that there is a third code degeneracy in many cases so the answer is no the answer is no this is because of the unusual basis that i am talking about so these unusual bases there may be some hybridization or some pairing that will be against that will be that will not conform to the complementary base pairing given by say watson and crick so watson and crick said that a will base pair with t and g will base pair with c and if i am talking of uh, rna then a with u and g with c that is the complementary base pairing but there may be some base pairing that are against this particular rule and this is because of unusual basis and this francis crick called this as wobble hypothesis this is please understand this very important term i am talking of wobbling you can understand wobbling is not very stable so wobble means something which is not stable so this is because of some unusual bases that are present in uh, present in transfer rna molecule let us look at one so let us look at one a very very important unusual base present in the transfer rna molecule is uh, is inosine let me show you the structure of this particular nucleoside now this is the base which is called as hypoxanthine inosine is actually a nucleoside so that means this hypoxanthine is the base this hypoxanthine you can see is attached to the pentose sugar which is ribose and we know that the combination of a nitrogenous base and pentose sugar is called as a nucleoside this nucleoside this is what i am trying to tell you is called as inosine and if you want to convert this into a nucleotide you will have to attach at five prime carbon the phosphate group and it becomes nucleoside monophosphate and this nucleoside is inosine so just have a look so we are looking at hypoxanthine and it is being attached to inosine can you see that this also has a double ring so i will suggest you to visit your ncrt and just try to see that can you imagine that what may be the nitrogenous purine base the structure of which is very similar to hypoxanthine you know this is double ringed heterocyclic nitrogen containing ring in this structure so i hope this thing is absolutely clear so when i am saying that inosine is a is an unusual base so that is basically what i am speaking what i am trying to say is about nucleoside but it is normally taken as the base itself so we are looking at inosine now this inosine has some unusual base pairing property and that means it can actually it can actually bind to u which is uracil you know it can actually bind to a so it can actually bind to a that that you know and it can actually bind to cytosine as well so these are the wobble base pairs these are the wobble base pairs again a wobble base pair the fourth one is g and u 
so this is these are the four base pairs which are not very strong which are wobbly which are which are basically against which are against the norm that is given by the complementary base pairing as proposed by watson and crick and this makes some uh, some for a very interesting property that we will discuss right now so you can see that this i can actually bind to u a and c now just try to imagine just try to imagine u a and c so that means please understand that this codon g g c which codes for let us say glycine i am giving you a very important hypothetical example this is ggA that also codes for glycine and ggU also codes for glycine look at the third basis the third the third basis in this codon the on the messenger rna the third base is g a uh, c a and u c a and u now remember i told you that the first base of the anti codon will bind to will bind to the third base on the codon so if you remember let me show you again so i said that 3 prime to 5 prime this is dna tac this is very very important to understand we made a transcript which is a u g this is the first base second and third this is the mrna codon and when i am talking of trna then i said that this would be the first base and this is the third base because the direction would be 3 prime to 5 prime so i am saying that the first base of the anti codon is binding to the third base of the codon and on top of it i am saying that there is third code degeneracy as well so if a transfer rna molecule at its anti codon loop has inosine at its first place in the anti codon then it can actually identify all three so you do not require three different transfer rnas then i hope this is getting clear to you so let us say let us say that there is there is a transfer rna molecule and let us say this is 3 prime 5 prime and at the first first position there is inosine so it can identify a messenger rna molecule which may have which may have u here which may have uh, a here or which may have let us say c here and if i write the other ones so this would be all glycine this will all be glycine so but please understand these two are these two are these two these two and these two bases of the codon and the two bases of the anti codon will be very tightly fit so this will be strong enough the wobbling will be only here and this wobbling is because of the unusual complementary base pairing then therefore there can be economization of the transfer rna molecule so you therefore you do not require 61 transfer rna molecule for identifying the 61 different codons apart from the three terminator codons i hope you are understanding this please watch the video again and then 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 make your notes and then you will be able to understand if you understand this point clearly there will be no problem whatsoever in any entrance that you are saying and please uh, th th there is an important question there may be a hypothetical question they will ask you that if it is so what is the minimum number of trans uh, minimum number of transfer rna molecules that may be required to uniquely identify 61 codons so the answer would be 31 but is it the number no the number is much more the number is much more and you will see that you can have a maximum of let us say 41 so it is always the number is less than 45 so this is what is the result of the wobbling and this wobbling was actually given by francis crick so very very important concept i hope it is absolutely clear now let us come to an another uh, another important point that would be the final point of this video this is called as amino acylation of transfer rna molecule so we are saying amino acylation if you read your ncrt uh, this is very very important topic we are saying amino acylation of transfer rna now this would also be called as charging of transfer rna there is a very very unique question to understand here now please understand charging or amino acylation of transfer rna means 
the transfer of a amino acid that has been activated to the three prime end of the cognate transfer RNA molecule. Now, please understand again, I am making the clover leaf model of of the transfer RNA molecule this we know this is where the amino acid is going to get attached and this will be carrying an anticodon here this attachment of the activated amino acid to the three prime acceptor end of the cognate transfer RNA molecule is called as the charging of tRNA and this process is also called as amino acylation for the simple reason that a very very important enzyme a very important enzyme which is called as amino acyl tRNA synthase or synthetase this is the this is the enzyme that actually catalyzes this thing so that means the charging of the tRNA is again an enzyme mediated process and a very very important enzyme in molecular biology this is amino acyl tRNA synthetase that is, is responsible for transferring of activated transfer activated amino acid to the three prime end of their cognate transfer RNA molecule now let us understand what does it all what does all all of this means which means that the amino acids are actually lying in cytosol and there are transfer RNA molecules as well. So the transfer RNA molecules as well are lying on the in the cytosol. So this this must be ready. So they must be ready whenever the messenger molecule messenger RNA molecule comes they must be ready they must be charged with their cognate tRNA. So that means it is a prerequisite for translation not the first step of translation. So I will not wait for the messenger RNA to come and then attach amino acid to the transfer RNA. So I will already attach the, uh, attach the amino acids to the transfer RNA molecule. So whenever, whenever the message comes to the protein synthesis uh, uh, apparatus which is the ribosome I am ready with, with loaded uh, I would say transfer RNA molecule. I hope this is absolutely clear. So this thing is a prerequisite for translation. Please do not do not misunderstand. This is not the first step. As I am saying, whether or not translation is happening or not happening, uh, we we are seeing that the amino acids are being transferred to the three prime end of their cognate tRNA molecule. The process called as amino acylation, and this is done by amino acyl tRNA synthetase. Now, uh, now I will like to draw your attention to a very unique thing. Just try to understand. We are saying that the initiator tRNA, initiator tRNA would be called as also called as methionyl tRNA. Please try to remember the names. So we are saying that a methionyl tRNA will also be called as initiator tRNA. This is the transfer RNA molecule. This is transfer RNA molecule. Please understand this very clearly which will be carrying at its three prime end the methionine or formylated methionine but what i am seeing that this methionine is actually coded for by aug i know the codon of aug but on transfer rna there is no code written as such so we know that this has to be AUG 5 prime to 3 prime. We know the codon for methionine, but we are saying that it would be CAU. So that means a transfer RNA molecule that is actually carrying an anticodon sequence of CAU will be carrying methionine. And I have already told you that the genetic code is universal, which means that methionine means AUG, it has a single codon. So sometimes loosely we say that there may be a second genetic code. So this is a term that is not actually favorably used but just try to just trying to instill the idea can you imagine the importance of amino acyl tRNA synthetase. It has not read AUG and it has transferred methionine to actually a transfer RNA molecule which does not carry the code AUG it carries CAU so sometimes we loosely describe the term what is called as a second genetic code and that would be based on amino acyl tRNA synthetase oh, so very good student will be able to understand there must be 20 different unique amino acyl tRNA synthetase because you are talking of 10, 20 different unique proteinogenic amino acids that are genetically coded for so this is a very very important enzyme we are talking about now let us look at the process of the amino amino acylation itself so what happens during amino amino acylation so let me show you a slide again so let us look at the slide again and what happens during amino acylation is something like this 
so let us look at this oh, this particular slide and see what happens so this is the amino acid actually it is a two step process it is a two step process the first one is called as the activation you, you you must have noted that i was using the word activated amino acid again and again and therefore this is the activation of the amino acid where the amino acid actually reacts with this nucleoside triphosphate actually ribonucleoside triphosphate this is a atp molecule so this is atp molecule it is imparted energy it is the activated amino acid and this ppi you can see has been separated this has been separated and this 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 amino acid actually reacts with atp and forms amino acyl amp so this is very very important to understand this is adenosine monophosphate so you get amino acyl uh, adenosine monophosphate this is the first step where you have imparted energy to this amino acid and this has been done with this particular molecule you are absolutely clear about the role of which this is the energy currency and we are imparting we are imparting energy to the to the amino acid this becomes the activated amino amino acid remember the name amino acyl amp remember what is what else is being formed it is this charged or activated amino acid activated amino acid that will be transferred to the 3 prime end of the transfer rna molecule this step is called as amino acid transfer this is very important to understand and this will also be catalyzed by amino acyl trna synthetase so that means it is a two step process the first step is activation and activation the amino acid is imparted energy to it so we will see that there would be amino acid that reacts with atp so i will like to write it as that this is activated amino acid this is activation step number 1 and then there is transfer this activated amino acid this activated amino acid is transferred to the 3 prime end of cognate trna molecule this is amino acid transfer this is step number 2 remember both steps are actually catalyzed by amino acyl trna synthetase i hope you have understood the importance of this particular enzyme amino acyl trna synthetase very very important enzyme in molecular biology now let me remind you a very important line of your ncert textbook so your ncert textbook says that if two amino acids which are activated that means have already been provided energy are brought closer to each other at the apparatus of protein synthesis which means something like this so let me explain this line of ncert to you so what your ncert is trying to say that the ribosome which will be involved in the translation of the messenger rna molecule so let us make a rough diagram this is the smaller subunit this is the larger subunit and this is the messenger rna molecule and there will be codons here there will be codons here and what going what is going to happen this is the larger subunit there will be a transfer rna molecule that will bring a particular amino acid and another transfer rna molecule that will bring an amino acid here so this is the adapter role of the transfer rna molecule it the, through the anticodon it is hybridizing with the codon and it is carrying a particular amino acid and this amino acid is actually coded for by this codon and now we understand the role of amino acyl trna synthetase so my ncert is saying that if two activated amino acids are brought together the formation of peptide bond is energetically favored you know that the, the energy energy considerations are are important in the formation of the chemical bonds so we are saying that we have already imparted energy to the amino acid and if two such amino acids which are activated by reaction with atp are brought together then the formation of the peptide bond between them is going to be energetically favored all it requires is the presence of catalyst this is the line of ncert that you must now understand so we have actually imparted the energy even before 
and therefore when they are brought closer at the ribosome the larger subunit of ribosome this is easy the peptide bond formation is now energetically favored all it requires is the presence of catalyze catalyst catalysis or a cata catalyst or a biochemical catalyst or a ribozyme and then we will see what exactly this enzyme is and therefore this will be easy to make a peptide bond linking the amino acid and this will lead to the formation of the polypeptide or the protein so i hope you have now understood absolutely clearly about this adapter molecule transfer rna so i hope you enjoyed the video thank you so much